Hey, y'all, Billy and Michelle from Perma Pastors Farm, a.k.a. the Homestead Honey. Anyway, anyway we're out here. We're going to do some pretty cool stuff today, and that is this year's version of Jeff Lawton's Instant Garden. Now, what brings me here today, I want to give a shout-out to my friend Eric. You saw her the other day. She had one going. That's what she had was an Instant Garden. We've done them many times before. We've taken you on the journey. But what really struck out to me is... There's another YouTuber out there. His name is Pinball Preparedness, okay? Monday morning, and I suggest everybody go check him out. If you want, if people ask where I get my news, where I find, well, you can get your news aggregation several times a day from this guy. Well, he talked about and used unimpeachable sources as to what's going on with the, I guess you can call it a coming famine in the world. Unimpeachable sources just over the weekend. So you ought to be asking yourself at this point, what about my food? Okay, that's really it in a nutshell. How can I get myself food? Well, th we're gonna show you a method today that works beautifully. We've done it all throughout here. What did that area look like behind us, honey? Yeah, that area was all just, I don't even know what, it was just like brambles. This area up here was blackberries, just thorny thicket, um, a mess. In a, in a nutshell, y'all, whenever you see thorns, thickets, nasty stuff like that, you got soil issues, okay, nephew? You got problems. So the pigs came through, they cleared it up for us, but you still got problems, okay? One of the quickest ways to build soil and to alleviate those problems, just like we did behind us, where it was just a complete thickety mess, is to go ahead and use this method we're gonna show you today. Okay, also, if you have little patches of spots where you say, I don't have a garden or I don't have room for it, this is the method for you. With that said, we're gonna get hopping and popping. All right, y'all, check this out. We've had this cardboard sitting over here for months. And this is kind of illustrating exactly what you can expect. Now, look at what you have over here. Not over there, because that's kind of a demarcation point of where we left off last time. That's actually a mulch layer, it looks pretty good. You have this very compacted, nasty stuff. You pull up this cardboard, look what you got there. Bam, that's the same soil as this right here. So you're already seeing, you can see these holes in the cardboard. Well, what do you think made that? All of the life in the soil, you build it, they will come. And we're gonna show you how to do that. Well, this time out, we're gonna use this handy dandy broad fork. We, you don't have to use it, y'all. If, if you're just really dead set on it, you can take a shovel, turn it over if you want to. We've done it. Everything you see behind here, we didn't do anything. We just did, we skipped this method entirely, but we got a broad fork, we're gonna use it. So right here is about where we left off, right, honey? All right, so all I'm gonna do is just lightly hit it with the broad fork. There you go. So all we're gonna do is just bust it up a little bit, not get all fancy, but I'm gonna hit this, basically this whole area right here. I'm at that spot where the cardboard was. I can literally stomp it in with one foot and get it right there. That goes to show you that you really don't need much more than cardboard. Really? <laughs> All right, so step one is done. And like I said, you don't have to do that step, but it's gonna make it much better much easier. This whole area has now been broad for it. And I'm sweating like Joe Biden at a, swell, at a spelling bee. So now it's time for the next step. So you can water. If you want, you can put manure down. You can do all that, but you don't have to. But we're going to go ahead and water anyway. And we're going to lay the cardboard down. Then we're going to saturate that. Then we'll move on to the next. y'all it's always best if you can take your cardboard and you had like a big wheelbarrow and you can saturate it it's always best and then just flop it down 
And you can go really thick on this stuff. I mean, William's telling me you can go up to three feet, uh, according to uh, Bill Mullison. We've never done that before, and I have no intentions of trying it. Didn't he put old carpet down? Yeah, too? back like, in the day. Yeah, you could use carpet. Yeah. So there was back when carpet didn't have all the kind of synthetic stuff that they have in it right point, now. The point is, he would just take old carpet and just throw it down and let it. So you can put, you can go thick on the cardboard. Right, and we don't have silage tarps, y'all. So I know that's popular and a lot of people do it, but I don't see plastic growing in nature. But cardboard, you know, I can make an argument for it. And in fact, in those little ridges in the cardboard, like Jeff Lawton says, it makes something of a super highway. And as we showed you there in the stack where it was, the soil was distinctly different. Now, if you did nothing else but come this far and then put a carbon source on top of it, you are going, am I lying when I say you are going to lose your mind in about six months from now? Anyway, we had to stop because William thought he was going to sneeze. <laughs> Who knew? We got to stop the whole program. Any <laughs> you do when I'm recording, Dad. <laughs> okay, at this point, all we're going to do is cover it with a carbon source. Now, we've used leaves in the past. You can do that. But we got straw, and uh, you want to make sure that it hasn't been treated with any junk. We've used this straw before, and we've had no problems. Now, you can go as high as two feet thick on this if you want to. So that's really the next step. We got the cardboard nice and saturated. Now we're just gonna cover it with a carbon source. All right, y'all. So like I said before, if you did nothing else, your soil will be drastically improved I can't remember what the numbers are. Jeff Lawton talked about it in detail the way he did it. I can't remember how much soil you can build in a year, but it is significant. And honestly, you'll take that hard stuff and soon the, you just build it and they will come. And the day are the worms and all the other beneficial things in the soil. So here we are. If you, like I said, um, leave it or drive on. We're going to drive on. So our car, our cardboard is down below here. I'm just going to make myself a little cylinder. I'm going to find the cardboard. Okay. Got my little knife, part of my EDC or everyday carry. I'm just gonna make a, I'm gonna cut a big X in there like so. See that? Some people don't even do that. And once we've done that, okay, we got us a little cylinder. I got an X in there and I basically made my way beneath it. All I'm gonna do is take a little bit of soil, top soil in this case. I'm gonna throw it down in there. And then what do we got, honey? We got some Siberian kale. And we've also got some uh, red Russian. Yep, want to give a shout out to Era who gave this to us the other day when we were talking about that PDC. And remember, she's got that going. Sign up date, you want to do it by Friday. So now we're going to stick it down in that hole, give it a nice little home, and now we're just going to do one of these, y'all. Well, actually, I could put a little bit more. These are a little bit bigger than we typically do. So let me get this, let me correct it a little bit. Let me get it down in there. And it's just, the bottom of that is just below the cardboard, okay? So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of topsoil, stick it in there, bam, we're ready to rock and roll. So we're just gonna go ahead and plant this row out. We're gonna put all kinds of stuff in here, y'all. What do we got next? There's another uh, Siberian kale plant, but then we've also got um, some broccoli rob that she gave us that we're gonna plant. Um, some other, a different kind of Lacinato kale. We've got some cauliflower also. We've got some marigolds and also we've got some bee balm we're gonna plant for the pollinators. And marigolds are also just to, just to keep pests away and... So basically we got a bunch of brassicas from the brassica family we're gonna put up in here. We're gonna stick it on this edge, okay? Then we got some other stuff we're gonna plant down the way. So we'll go ahead and get this done first. Okay, now we're doing potatoes, and we're just doing the same thing. We're making a hole, putting some soil in, put some potatoes in, a potato in, and then putting soil on top of it, and covering it back up with a straw.
All right, when I do potatoes, y'all, I got this little method here. I cut an X, just like so, and I pull back the cardboard, and now there's like one, two, three, four pieces of cardboard there, okay? Kind of push it back like so, throw the soil in the hole, like this. And remember, it was broad fork down below, so it's, it's kind of, it's cool. Put my seed potato in, stick it down in there. And you can see how the cardboard's kind of back like that. It's kind of cool. Now I'll just cover it up and you can see your cardboard's still out of the way, but it's still providing all the protection. And bam, that's a wrap, y'all. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. So in a nutshell, we got our brassicas up front here. Right behind that, we got some potatoes that frankly we forgot all about that should have been planted a while ago, but we got them done. And then behind there, we got a bunch more stuff. I mean, we're gonna do this all the way down here because every single time you do it, y'all, it just builds soil. We use this, this is our go-to method no matter the place. And like I said, we added a few more steps that you don't necessarily have to do. But here's what you ought to be taking away, I think, from this video, going right back to what we discussed in the very beginning. I know you may not see it where you are right now, but food security, I, I it seems, surreal that I even got to talk about this sort of thing. But at the same time, there's many of us that did see it coming. So here it is. We are at this place. Ask yourself, can I take what they just did out here? And can I do it in another place? Could I do it in a public place? Could I do it in a national park? Just like Joel Salatin said, you know, they're growing dope in the national parks. Nobody ever thought about growing tomatoes. Well, it can be applied that same places. What about some open areas? What about some places that, like I told you way back, you know, I did it at the VA hospital in Leavenworth, Kansas. There's food for us all over that places that I put in and probably to this day, nobody else knows about. So this can also be used. Let's say this year you put in annuals. Well, guess what else you did? Like William mentioned a second ago, this could also be prepped just like Era said in the other video. This could also be prepped for a future food forest. It could be prepped for a future orchard. It could be prepped for a number of other things. Let's say you wanted to do it all over again. Like I talked to um, Sean, the modern yeoman. Like I told him what we normally do in a lot of our beds is we just start over again. Okay, so you did this. Next year, we can let the weeds grow up, chop them off, start another instant garden right on top of it. Not the best way to do it, but it can be done that way. So think about all those little areas. Do you have a lawn? If you knew the history, go look it up for yourself. Find out where the lawn came from and ask yourself, does that even make sense? Are you royalty? Cause I'm not. Anyway, think about even your lawn and all those places where you have to think outside the box. Okay y'all, so absorb what's useful and apply it and please by all means let us know about it. So if you need bone sauce, world's best deer repellent, we make it right here. You need comfrey, we got some of that too. Like I said, we discontinued the 50s, but we got 10s and 20s. If you need the world's best chicken processing video, check it out down below, EMP Shield. Do I need to say more? You can also find it down below. Check us out on Patreon. Till next time, this is Billy along with my homestead honey, Michelle from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. Right here is just another method of permaculture, another tool in the toolbox. We'll see you next time.